Olivia Dunn is one of the most followed college athletes on social media, but success wasn't handed to her. From racking up medals to raking in millions, Dunn's rise to the top was filled with lots of hard work and dedication. Olivia Dunn is a Hillsdale, New Jersey native whose parents have athletic paths of their own. Her dad was a member of the football team at Rutgers University, while her mom was a cheerleader who also did gymnastics. However, it wasn't her mother who inspired Dunn to become a gymnast. At age three, Dunn saw her cousin wearing a pink, glittery leotard and fell in love with the look. She recalled to Elle, I was like, Mom, I want that. And she said, well, you can't have a leotard unless you do gymnastics. So I was like, sign me up. Her parents obliged, and Dunn soon began training at a local gym. By six, she upgraded to a new gym, the Eastern National Academy of Gymnastics in Paramus. The coaches at ENA Gymnastics train gymnasts from level three all the way up to the elite category, the highest level of competition. So it was the perfect fit for a serious young gymnast looking to develop her skills and start competing in meets. It didn't take Dunn long to impress one of her new coaches, Craig Zappa. He told NorthJersey.com, she is very smart about what she does, and she learns very very fast. At ENA Gymnastics, it took Dunn just a year to advance from level 4 all the way up to level 8. At this point, her best event was beginning to become evident as she earned a New Jersey scoring record on the uneven bars. Coach Zappa told NorthJersey.com in 2017, most skills that take a lot of kids a couple of months sometimes, she can just pick it up in two days or one practice and just move it through. Dunn reached level 10 at age 10, an achievement that allowed her to compete at the 2013 Junior Olympic National Invitational Tournament. The following year, she earned junior international elite status. She was just 11 years old at the time, making her the youngest elite competitor in the U.S. Dunn created her Instagram account at age 9 and began building a following by sharing gymnastics content. In one of her earliest posts, she's pictured posing with someone she looked up to, fellow gymnast Ali Raisman. The photo was taken just a few weeks after Raisman returned from the London Olympics with two gold medals. Olivia couldn't have known then that she'd someday have more than twice as many Instagram followers as the Olympian. Olivia's mother, Catherine, explained to USA Today that she was fine with her daughter being on Instagram at such a young age because her busy gymnastics schedule made it difficult for her to spend time with her peers. She told the newspaper, she used it to stay in touch with friends she had from gymnastics who were around the country. But for Olivia, social media was so much more than a means of communicating with people she knew. She told the New York Post, doing social media is always something that I've loved and I've always taken it pretty seriously. I think consistency is key with social media. By 2014, Dunn was already so popular on Instagram that an impersonator began stealing her content. The gymnast was 11 years old at the time and really upset that someone else was taking credit for her hard work. However, Dunn's teammates helped cheer her up by creating a funny video. Dunn told the gymternet, Everyone wore masks with my face and pretended to be me. It was really funny and made me laugh about the whole thing. That same year, Dunn had her sights set on the Olympics and was training hard to get there. She headed to Caroli Ranch, the national team training center in Texas, for a five-day developmental training camp. According to ENA Gymnastics, her gym sessions lasted seven hours each day. I pretty much sacrificed my summers. You know, those pool days, those beach days with your friends. I was in the gym training. Dunn told The Daily Voice that she started homeschooling in 2016 so she could prioritize her gymnastics training. By then, it was evident that the sport was going to get her into the college of her choice. She cracked the top 10 at two events at the 2016 National Championships, finishing 8th place on beam and 4th place on floor. Months later, Dunn returned to the Caroli Ranch to sharpen her skills. One of her fellow trainees was future Olympian Jordan Childs. Coach Zappa told NorthJersey.com, The development camps really make her accountable for her gymnastics. You go there and watch everyone else kick butt, and she realizes that she has to keep up. Dunn attended a selection camp the following March, and her performance there landed her a spot on the USA national team. Dunn represented her country at the 2017 City of Gesolo Trophy in Italy and left with a gold medal for the team event. She also placed sixth in the junior all-around. In 2019, Dunn told Famous Birthdays that this was her proudest moment. In 2017, Dunn shared an update on her Instagram following with NorthJersey.com, revealing that it was up to 8,602. She said, It's really cool how some people look up to me and think that I am really good. Some say I inspire them and made them stay with gymnastics from watching my videos. It makes me happy because gymnastics is fun. 
2018 was a tough year for Olivia Dunn. Caroli Ranch, which had been an integral part for her training, shuttered its doors following the sex abuse conviction of Dr. Larry Nasser, the physician for the U.S. Women's National Gymnastics Team. The coaches who ran the ranch, Bella and Marta Caroli, had also been accused of fostering an abusive environment. Dunn told Elle, "...it shut down, obviously, because it was not a good place, but I went from the age of 10 until I was 16. That was the only way to make your dreams come true as a gymnast." Dunn became a senior elite gymnast in 2018, but an ankle injury kept her from competing in every event except the uneven bars at the U.S. Classic. Meanwhile, Dunn was granted an injury petition to compete at nationals, where she placed 18th in the all-around. That August, Dunn told Flow Gymnastics that she hurt her ankle while practicing on the beam. During an appearance on the BFF's podcast in 2021, Dunn said she later made peace with the fact that the injury was probably responsible for killing her Olympic dreams. I was like, maybe this is not for me anymore and maybe I should just go to college and be healthy and happy. Olivia Dunn was still a tween when she caught the attention of recruiters from Louisiana State University. Being a young Jersey girl, she confessed that she'd never heard of the school before then. However, one thing her coaches told her about the college immediately appealed to her. They're like, the colors are purple, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so interested now." Based on her experience, Dunn thinks it's a positive thing that age-restrictive recruitment rules for colleges have since been put into place. "...you shouldn't know where you want to go to school when you're, like, 11 years old." Dunn accepted a full scholarship to LSU in 2017 and didn't regret the decision, even though it was initially based on what color her leotard would be. She told 225 Magazine in 2022, "...I visited my freshman year, and they had the best facilities and the best coaching staff, and the school spirit is the best I have ever seen." While chatting on the Twin Talk podcast that December, Dunn said that her older sister, Jules, was already a student at LSU when she started attending school there. So that was another big plus. Dunn said on the podcast, "...she lives right down the hall for me, actually. Thank God, because I don't know what I'd do without her. She is my rock." Dunn joined TikTok in 2019, but didn't plan on participating in the app's popular trends at the time. She told WGNO ABC in 2020, "...it was mostly people posting dance videos, and I can't dance really, like they do. What she could do was tumble, so she started sharing videos that showcased her skills in the gym." Among her early TikToks are a blooper reel of some pretty painful-looking gymnastics fails, including a fall that resulted in Dunn hitting her back on the uneven bars. According to Dunn, she didn't start gaining a huge social media following until the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020. It was during that time that she switched up the setting of her videos. Dunn recalled to the New York Post, "...I was quarantined in Florida, and I just started making content at the beach, doing flips and filming it." She believes that the sunny locale and her happy demeanor possibly resonated with social media users during a period of fear and uncertainty. She told Elle, "...I don't know if it was just a little glimmer of positivity, but people loved the vibes in my videos." Creating the videos was also something to keep her preoccupied while she was unable to train at the gym or compete in meets. Her mom told Elle, "...she just started doing social media like it was her job." Dunn became a big celebrity on campus at LSU. However, she did reveal on Twin Talk that some of the school's sorority members weren't her biggest fans. Dunn told the hosts, "...most people didn't even know I actually did gymnastics. People just thought I was just a full-time beach flipper." But instead of worrying about her social media popularity overshadowing her collegiate gymnastics career, Dunn monetized her beach flipping fame. In 2021, the NCAA changed its name, image and likeness, or NIL policy, which allowed Dunn to get paid for endorsement deals with companies. It is very cool that someone in college has the opportunity to do that now. LSU showed its support for the move by paying to have a Times Square billboard showcase Dunn and some of its other student-athletes. Dunn recalled what it was like to see her likeness on the billboard, telling Elle, "...that was surreal. I didn't really know what was to come, but I knew it was going to be special. Because she hails from New Jersey, she was able to make the trek to Times Square to see her image on the billboard. The first deal Dunn struck was with the athletic apparel company Fiori. She told Forbes that September, "...I was trying to find a brand to work with that is authentic to me." The then 18-year-old reportedly made six figures from that deal alone. Dunn soon took advantage of earning opportunities offered by other brands, including American Eagle. Dunn's notoriety didn't just make her a hot commodity with brands. She also landed a part as a cheerleader in the 2022 music video for the Walker Hayes song, Y'all Life, which afforded her the opportunity to visit Music City. She said on Twin Talk, "...I am in love with Nashville now. I'm so glad that work brought me to there, because now I'm gonna just live my life there." Dunn also got to walk a red carpet for the first time in 2022, and it was fittingly for a sports-related event, the ESPYs. She later recounted the surreal experience of being asked how it felt to be the most famous person at the event. Dunn told NOLA.com, "...I was like, I am not. I was in the presence of people like The Rock, 
Steph Curry, huge names. It's just so funny to me that social media has that kind of power. Maybe she hasn't quite achieved the same level of fame as an NBA icon or pro wrestler turned movie star, but Dunn did top the on three NIL valuations list of the most influential female college athletes that same year. The college sports platform placed Dunn's earnings at $2.3 million at that time. When she showed off her ESPYs dress on TikTok, Dunn also received tons of compliments from her fans. In 2022, the New York Times published an article about the NCAA's NIL rule change. The title of the article was, New Endorsements for College Athletes Resurface an Old Concern, Sex Sells. Meanwhile, the lead image was of Dunn wearing one of her LSU leotards. She was interviewed for the piece and explained why the opportunity to make money from NIL deals in college was such a blessing for female athletes. Dunn told the outlet, There are no professional leagues for most women's sports after college. However, Stanford basketball coach Tara Vanderveer said that it was a step back for female athletes because physical appearance can be a factor in social media popularity, which translates to interest from brands. Dunn seemed to throw shade at Vanderveer in a TikTok video. In it, she wore another team leotard and lip synced the words. Um, if you don't like me, that's fine. But, you know, watch your mouth. On the Full Send podcast in June 2023, Dunn accused her New York Times interviewer of being overly fixated on her appearance. She also called the newspaper out for its headline and photo combo. Dunn said on the podcast, Let's say they went into the football facility, took a picture of one of the players working out without a shirt on. They would never put a giant headline, Sex Sells. When Sports Illustrated offered Olivia Dunn the opportunity to pose in the swimsuit issue, it wasn't her social media fame that put her on the magazine's radar. As the gymnast recalled on the Full Send podcast, she was told that the publication liked her New York Times clapback. I got off the phone with them and I was jumping up and down and I think I cried and I was so excited. Really? The magazine's editor-in-chief, MJ Day, defended Dunn in a Sports Illustrated article that included a sneak peek at her photo spread. Day said, The refusal of some to appreciate Livy for being more than just a pretty blonde is missing the point. She praised Dunn's hard work and dedication to her sport, as well as her major entrepreneurial moves, adding, In a world where women are constantly being forced to pick a lane, Livy is in all of them, winning. Sports Illustrated made sure that its sole focus wasn't on the way Dunn looked in her cutout bikini by quizzing her about a variety of topics. She spoke about social media, gymnastics, mental health, and the fun she was creating to help other female college athletes earn money through NIL partnerships. Dunn also expressed her desire to be a positive role model for her fans, saying, I want to show young girls that you can have it all, and you don't need to choose between whatever it is you're passionate about. There's a lot of young girls that look up to me. When Dunn appeared on Twin Talk, she opened up about her struggle to recover from a long-term relationship, saying, I dated someone for like a year and a half, and that heartbreak was one of the most painful feelings I have ever felt. The gymnast also shared that she finds it difficult to make a genuine connection with guys she meets online. It can be hard to trust them because she worries that they may only be interested in her fame. Luckily, this wasn't a problem when she found love again in 2023. In an interview with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette that August, former LSU baseball player Paul Skeens revealed that he and Dunn met through her roommate, Elena Arenas, who happened to be dating one of Skeens' close friends. Skeens was the number one pick of the 2023 MLB draft that July and scored a record-breaking signing bonus worth over $9 million from the Pittsburgh Pirates. So he's likely not dating Dunn for money or clout. In fact, he wishes that both of them didn't get quite as much attention whenever they go out together. Skeens told the newspaper, It can be a pain in the butt sometimes, to be honest. Skeens also said this about his girlfriend, I do wish she could come to a baseball game and just enjoy it. It does irk me. I don't have any control over it. She really doesn't either. In September 2023, Dunn snagged the 48th spot on the Forbes Top Creators list. In addition to her $2.3 million in earnings, she had 12 million followers across all social media platforms at the time. Dunn spoke to NOLA.com about why she didn't simply quit college gymnastics to become a full-time content creator, telling the outlet, I love my team, and I still love to do gymnastics. That's why I'm still here. But losing that camaraderie was always inevitable, as was a future where she would be forced to rebrand herself as something other than a student athlete. For her college major, she chose an interdisciplinary studies program, a combo of leadership, communications, and sociology. These are all fields that an entrepreneur can gain useful knowledge and insight from. Dunn told Forbes she isn't certain what her future holds, but she would like to develop her own brand someday. I definitely want to keep expanding my Livy brand. 
The possibility she mentioned included an apparel line or an app of some kind. She told the outlet, I do feel like I have an entrepreneurial background, so I want to put that to good use. Becoming a commentator is another option. All of her interviews and podcast appearances have made her a natural when it comes to speaking on camera. As for where she plans on living, Dunn told Elle a coastal city would be ideal, saying, then I can just honestly go back to what I started doing. I could flip around on the beach.